I would like to speaker with you for just a second. Right now, when we get started, let's help the algorithm. Let me know what speakers you have on your desk. Is it time for an upgrade? I'm just curious. Just let me know in the comments. And if you're just using headphones, what happens if you want to sit back and listen to music or something? Do you have any speakers? Let me know. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply and that price comes down. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on My Purchase Orders, just View Keys and Codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activation Settings, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. It occurs to me that I don't do enough audio videos, so let's take a look at a set of speakers. These are from IEMA. It's the S. 500 brand new now if you haven't heard of IEMA go look at the subreddit for like budget audio gear and you'll see them all the time now they usually make DACs and little amps but they have a couple different speakers and they're sort of expanding their line of speakers so they've kind of developed a reputation for giving you a lot for the money that you spend and that's why I wanted to take a look at these s500 speakers and immediately you'll notice that you got a lot for the money so let's go through the specs and then we'll you know talk about how they sound so these are powered bookshelf style speakers 60 watts each 120 watts overall the sensitivity to noise ratio is give or take 80 decibels distortion is less than 1% and the frequency response range is 60 to 20,000 kilohertz so these have two speakers on the bottom you have a four inch it's a mid to low frequency speaker it's a kind of a subwoofer but you know you if you want a sub you're gonna have to plug up a sub because it's a four inch speaker you got bass but it's a four inch speaker you know temper your expectations with a four inch speaker and then above that they have a internal magnet silk tweeter i'm not sure if those words are in the right order but whatever that's what it says you got your little silk tweeter right there and that produces some crisp and sparkly tones and you put them together and you kind of have a full range decent sound but we can tweak this sound a lot i'll get to the way it sounds in just a second we're still going through the specifications here the dimensions 243 millimeters tall by 140 the dimensions 243 millimeters tall by 140 millimeters wide by 190 millimeters front to back if you need to measure out your desk you know what if you're in America, 9.56 inches tall by 5.51 inches across by 7.48 inches from front to back. Speaking of the back, let's take a look at that now. Look at all that. Look at all that stuff. All kinds of things here. I'm just going to look at it and talk about it. So on the top, we have three different buttons. One's the power. One lets you, uh, one's the power, one lets you change your source. And then the other one is your EQ. And we have a couple different modes here. We've got like your theater mode and your music mode and then your dialogue mode, which is actually kind of interesting because it uh, gets rid of a lot of the lower frequency. So the voice is not like, brr, 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 you know, like that stuff. If you're listening to an audio book, that'll be nice. And it boosts the midtones. So I, that's the only one I would really use. Otherwise, I'm just going to put it back into the, the music mode and then I'll do the EQing myself. Thank you very much. The big gold knob, that is your volume and you can control it right there. It'll also work inside whatever you're using, like your device to control the volume. But this is, you know, the potentiometer on the actual unit. And below that, we have two more analog potentiometers that stop at zero. They've got a little stop right there at zero. And that is your bass and treble boost. The top one will control your treble to give you extra crispiness if you need some of that on top and the bottom will give you extra bass. That's kind of the thing that I like a lot about these is they allow you to tune the frequencies up to your own like. On the top there, we actually have an optical in. That's kind of cool to see. So that's going to be your highest quality input. Beside that, we have a sub out. Another thing that you don't see on speakers in this price range uh, very often. Then below that, we have RCA line in and that's left and right. And then we have USB. This is not USB input from your computer. There's not like a DAC in here that's doing anything. This is for plugging up a USB a thumb drive or something that's filled with song. Then you can use the, the remote that it comes with to switch through all the songs. So that's going to be handy if you take it somewhere. And who's going to be using that? A thumb drive? Sure, I guess. And then the last little RCA there is just a speaker out for the second speaker. I was going to say left speaker, but the other speaker. This also has Bluetooth. Now the Bluetooth is version 5. 
So not the newest, fanciest Bluetooth, but Bluetooth 5. And in my testing, the Bluetooth sounds okay, but it doesn't sound nearly as good as, you know, like the direct inputs. Let's talk about the audio quality. Now, when it comes to using these as near fields, they're gonna work for that. You know, I've also used speakers like this. Uh, I had some, some CR4s for a while, and the CR4s sound pretty good, but I think these can keep up with the CR4s, and you have many, many more options, because you can see here on the back of the CR4s, we only have a couple different inputs. Now we have these quarter-inch inputs, which sound pretty good. We don't have outputs for um, your subwoofer, so and at least not on a line level, you can use this to run to your subwoofer, but it's not nearly as easy. I much prefer the, the line level RCA jack that we have on the back here. We have many more options here. So while this may be a little less expensive, you know, I found that they have similar sound profiles. I actually like the sound that I can get out of the S500 from IEMA quite a bit better because I can tune it up just how I like. Now, I generally like my audio to be, I guess, a little bit more sparkly. And then the bass, I don't really care that much about because I run it into a subwoofer. If you're not gonna run this into a subwoofer, you might wanna give the bass a little bit of a, a, little bit of a crank. You can make it sound the way you want it to sound. Now that's as far as the tone goes and the frequency and all that sort of thing. You can you can tune that up and basically equalize it the way you like. And that's pretty much all I needed to get it to sound uh, how I wanted it to sound. Now, of course, you're gonna have like studio monitors that cost three or $400 that are gonna sound significantly better. And, you know, I'm not sure what exactly the science that goes into all that and how, how they make things, even though it looks like the, the EQ is very similar, like why does one thing sound better than the other? So I could probably do a deep dive and go down some rabbit holes on figuring out, you know, what makes things sound different. Is it the, the maybe it's not the tone, but maybe it's the timbre, I don't know. Um, While well, you can have like the same, the same frequencies and the same pitches, but different qualities to them. I'm basically trying to say, say that they do sound good, but don't expect to get, you know, like $400 worth of sound out of something that's half the price of that. But if you're going to compare them to like two or $300 speakers, then I think they can go toe to toe with a lot of the ones that are out there, including, like I said, the audio engines. I got a set of audio engine A2s on my disc. Now those are smaller, but a lot of people say, oh, they sound so good for small speakers. These sound, so I plugged them in. I was like, oh no, they sound so much better. And I don't have room for these on my desk, so I'm trying to figure out, like, can I get these somewhere? I, like, I tried to put them back there, and I was like, my monitor arms were slamming into them. I need to get some, like, speaker stands and stuff and put these up because they sound so much better than the Audio Engine A2s. And like I said, I had the A5s before, but I don't have a lot of desk space right now. And I think these, like I said, go pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe with those, but I like the fact that we have more options when it comes to all the connectivity, all the, you know, the knobs on the back. We got we just got more options here with the S500. So I like that as well. Now, when it comes to the sound quality with the Bluetooth, I found that for some reason it sounded low powered. Like it, like I kept thinking like, what's up with this? I turned it up on my phone and over the Bluetooth. It just sounded like it needed a bigger power amp. Like it's like, it's there, but it's like not pushing hard enough. But then when I plugged it back up to the computer and then turned it on, I was like, okay, it sounds like we got our power back. You know, it's got some drive to it. It's it's working a little better. So, and the other thing about the, the Bluetooth, did you, clearly can't tell that it is being compressed. So, you know, Bluetooth 5, it is what it is. If you need it in a pinch and you're like, you just want to like listen to something, listen to an audiobook, totally fine. If you're an audiophile, you're not going to be using Bluetooth anyway, right? All right. You got all your other connectivity options. You're probably going to be using that optical input, which is kind of crazy that it has so many different inputs. Anyway, I think I've talked enough. You know, just know that you can like tune this thing up, make it sound really good, tons of options. And the bottom line is that it sounds really good for the money and it sounds really good for even maybe a little more money. Like it's going to bat a little bit above its weight. If you got 500 bucks, maybe get something different. Uh, you know, if you're looking at like a $500 set of bookshelf speakers and that's the budget you got, get this, spend an extra $100, $200 on a nice sub and it's going to sound way better than your bookshelf speakers. Tune this up to be your high and mids and then use your sub and it'll sound really good. So we'll leave it with that. Let me know what you think. Do you want to see some more audio file videos? I enjoy doing these because I get to play with audio gear, which is more near and dear to me. Gaming, audio gear. The rest of the tech stuff I don't really care about, but it pays the bills. But this I actually enjoy. So let me know what you think of these IEMA S500 speakers. See you in the comments.